Hi, and welcome to Module 5. Now, we went through flow, the flow of energy and how to control it in the last module. Very important skill for you to acquire. We're going to do some befores and afters now using that information, and we're going to be doing it in particular rooms to help you out to figure out how to go about doing this. So this first before that we're going to do is a hallway or where the foyer is located in the house. And you're going to see certain things in here that probably are something that you might not be doing yourself, but it gives you the idea. And when somebody walks into this particular uh, house, there is a shelf down there at the bottom or a bench that somebody could easily walk into and skin their knee. That's one problem I see right away. Another problem you see that there's a staircase straight ahead and we have energy that's coming down that stairway, energy coming in, and therefore it gets confused and it's very hard for us to be able to distribute it very evenly. And if you notice, there's a room to the, to the right of the front door where there's a yellow arrow. That room right there is really hurting in a lot of cases. It's not getting a lot of energy because of the battle of the energy at the front door. Behind the door, the front door, is a lot of clutter. You notice that there's a bicycle parked in the hallway, the hallway that leads to the back of the house definitely an obstacle that we don't want to be there. Another thing I want you to notice is that somebody comes in late at night walking in the door the way it's hinged conceivably will feel a little insecure. So that situation could be taken care of by actually rehinging the door to the other side or doing what you're going to see on the after. They left the door where it's at. And they put a mirror on that wall. So now when you walk in, you can see in that mirror if there is anything to be concerned about behind the door. That mirror also diverts energy, starts to put it into meandering pattern so we can take it down the hallway. And if you notice, down that hallway leading to the back is a pot of flowers. And that just helps us to get into the meandering pattern. That's the bumper pull effect that we've mentioned already. That mirror also helps to get some energy into that room to the right that we've been having so many problems with. The clutter behind the door has been taken away. We now have a plant in the corner. Live plants actually raise the energy. So that's one of the reasons why it is there. Now, the energy coming down the stairway and coming in the front door are affected the, this way. Again, we have the energy hitting an obstacle at the front door. In this case, they're showing it by the use of a potted plant, probably not the best place to put it. But if you move that a little further down, maybe say halfway centering it with the mirror, you get the same effect, and we get it into a meandering pattern. We allow the energy to come down the stairway and leave without getting in our way. The floor is wood. Certainly, you might not be doing something like that, but again, I want to mention the idea of if you needed to move the energy faster to the back of the house to allow it to feel more uplifting and more comfortable, you might need to change the flooring before it was a carpet. Now when we do a kitchen, there's a lot of things you need to take into account also. First thing I want to mention to you is if you look at the green arrows off of that one corner on the counter there, not too far from the stove top. That's called a poison arrow. It's a sharp corner. Sharp corners in feng shui are a security problem, but they also are not just physical, but they're a mental problem too. They create stress. And that sharp corner 
will cause stress for some of the people sitting at that table closer to the windows. There are other sharp corners in that room too. It's something that's fairly common. And we're going to show you a cure in a moment that those sharp corners need to be taken away. Now you notice there's an awful lot of energy coming off those windows. No matter where your windows are, there is a lot of chi or energy coming through it. Some of it very forceful. And we need to counteract them. So let's take a good look at this and see what they did differently. Let's go back up to that sharp corner. They have a plant that actually droops over that corner. It's one way to handle it. They did the same thing on the other ones too. So the plant drooping over the corner softens that corner and makes it a lot easier for somebody to actually uh, work in here, sit in here, and eat in here. They changed the table to a circular table, and without a doubt in feng shui, the best tables are circles and ovals, if at all possible. If you have a table that is squared and has very sharp corners on it, it's to your benefit to soften those corners for yourself and for your visitors by using a tablecloth, and the tablecloth color will be chosen later as we get into the other tools. The tablecloth would soften the corners nicely for you. If you notice, they took the chairs and they moved the chairs so that they're not directly sitting with their backs to the windows. They're now at 45 degree angles. And we'll be using that idea even further on this particular module. 45 degree angle takes away that direct shot of energy. The plants help create the meandering effect. And that's the last thing we're going to look at in this particular case. There are some other items in here that you're going to need some more information to be able to understand why they're there. In a living room, there are a lot of things that need to be taken care of. One might be, for example, a desk. Now, a desk can be in a library, it can be in your office, certainly in at your business, it could be in a particular location. And some desk locations are better than others for productivity, security, and comfort. The one at the top, the top picture is not comfortable. This person has their back to the entrance. They have their back to the door that leads into this office. So therefore, they're always in an insecure position, getting a little less done, feeling a little less secure. You also want to make sure that you uh, move the equipment like fax machines and copiers, printers, away from you as much as possible. Nowadays with laptop computers and even standalones, you know, it's something we, we're going to have to deal with. But having too much of this electrical machinery close to you every day, all day, can be a health problem for you. So move the equipment away from your desk as much as possible. Keep a good distance between your chair and your computer screen, too. Now, the other picture on this particular slide is the right way to set a desk, if you have the room. The chair is on the other side of the desk. They have their back to a wall, which is the mountain in the classical armchair, and they can see who comes in the room and they feel like they have control of the whole room. They'll be more productive, more secure, and more comfortable. Take care of the sharp corners on the desk or other pieces of furniture, too, by using plants or fabric to soften them. Now, if you do get stuck in a position like the picture on the top, and you have no other choice with, with, with respect to your chair, use a reflective surface that you have set maybe to your left or right side of your computer so that you can see what is going on behind you. It could be a small compact mirror, or you can be very creative. Here's the before of a living room. You notice the front door is on the right-hand side, and there's a chair immediately in front of it when you open up the door. 
definitely a very uncomfortable situation for doing any kind of reading or focusing or anything. So we're going to move that chair, I promise you. Where the red arrows are, there is a corner, a sharp corner that needs to be handled. Poison arrow. We have a desk in the top left that has the back of the seat to the rest of the room. That's going to be also corrected. We have a coffee table that has sharp corners. We have a couch that has its back totally to those windows. So getting bombarded by all that energy. So let's look at the after. Let's start at the top left. That chair was moved to the other side of the desk. That person now feels definitely part of the room and will be more productive. Going in a clockwise direction, that one corner has been softened by a plant. Okay? Where the front door is, that chair that was in front of it has now been moved at to a 45 degree angle to the windows along with its matching chair. They're at 45 degrees. The couch has been moved off the windows to the solid wall of the mountain so that anybody sitting there now will be very secure. And the table has been changed out to take away some of the sharp corners. So that is not always what you're going to be able to do. I understand that. But if you can, you, you can definitely get a table that has less of the poison arrow effect. If you have that poison arrow effect, you might have to move the table around a little bit to take away the sharp corners from pointing at the door or pointing at somebody where they sit. Now the bedroom. The position of the bed in feng shui is, is very, very important. A good night's sleep is extremely important for everybody. So you want to make sure that uh, you take care of this situation as fast as possible. All three of these pictures right here are actually not good positions for the bed. And as you can guess, we spend more time in bed than anywhere else. And a lot of people will say we spend a third of our lives in the bed. So we want to take care of direction if possible. But the most important thing, if you remember the schools, the most important thing is to get it into the classic armchair so that its back is on a solid wall and that it's protected on both sides, and that it has a clear view of the entrance. All right, problem. Sleeping with your feet towards the door. That first picture at the top has its feet pointing straight at the door. The idea is that the energy coming through that door is going to go right over top of you. It's going to be a little too forceful, and therefore hurt your sleep. So, you would want to move the bed as much as possible, but in some cases the best you can do is to move that bed maybe six inches to the right or a foot to the right because you don't have any other wall space, because you have windows, and in this case we even have a fireplace in there, so it takes away that possible wall too. So you might have to just move it as much as possible so you don't have that direct shot. Now the window behind the bed is the bottom picture. That creates a situation where you have the back or your mountain to be unstable. It's, it's not creating that mountain for you. In some rooms, in some apartments, and in some dorm rooms, for example, you have no choice. So if you have no choice, you need to solidify that as much as possible by maybe using a headboard on the bed, by using shutters on the window, heavy blinds, always shutting them before you go to go to sleep and then certainly you want to open them up when you get up in the morning but if you have your choice you want to move the bed totally off the window and put it on a solid wall now the next one a mirror facing the bed and in this case also a television those are both reflective surfaces and we never want to have a reflective surface down at the end of a bed. So the best thing to do is to take both those objects out of there and not have a mirror in there and not have the TV in there. 
But if that's not possible, and I know that is probably going to be the case for some of you, the mirror needs to then be moved off to the side, and uh, the television, the same thing too. If you can't move them off to the side and not directly down at the bottom, you can always cover them up with a sheet before you go to sleep. You want to have no wires under your bed. You want to have your bathroom door shut while you're sleeping. You want to keep away from our energy going down the drains. And we don't want to be looking into the bathroom while we're sleeping. It's considered somewhat of a negative environment in feng shui. Now, if you have an electric alarm clock, and it's close to your head where you put your head down on the pillow, it's to your advantage to move that either out of the room totally and use a different type of alarm, or at least move it several inches away from your head or as much as you possibly can. The amount of electro electrical magnetic fields coming off of that are quite extreme, and it can consider to be a, a health problem. Also, if you're selling even if you're not, try not to let your bedroom become an office, okay? Move it somewhere else. This is a room that is your sanctuary. This is a room that needs to show that it's for restoration and possibly romance and really nothing else. Here's the before for the bedroom. Now, if you notice the bedroom, or the bed, I'm sorry, is up against a solid wall. Is it the best position? No, it is not. Because if you notice, the feet of the person would be pointing straight out the door. Is there any other choice here? Well, not a lot of good ones at all. So this might be the best one. You certainly could put a catty corner in the bottom right hand. That is a possibility. And if you did put it in the bottom right-hand corner, you can solidify that a little bit more because there's going to be room behind the bed board, the headboard, by putting a plant there. But we're going to keep it where it is right now. It's up against the solid wall. That is good. It feels somewhat protected to the left and the right, and they certainly can see the door that leads into it. So we're going to leave it there, even though it's not the great greatest possibility. Now, if you notice the tables, the uh, nightstands have sharp corners. If you notice, there is a desk to the left-hand side, and the chair is on that side. But there's not an awful lot of room there, either. You notice there's a doorway to the left that goes into the bathroom. And I hope you notice a sharp corner coming off, pointing straight at the person who is sleeping there, in red arrows. That sharp corner, again, is a poison arrow. This person has their television right down at the bottom of the bed. Again, that's a no-no. And uh, we have to take into account the windows, of course, on the right-hand side. Let's look at the after now. Okay, in this case, they move the television further away from the bed. They put some plants in some of the corners to raise the energy. They softened that one corner close to the bathroom. Close the bathroom door. The desk, again, there wasn't enough room really to put the chair on the other side of the desk. So you would put a reflective surface up there so that, again, you felt somewhat secure and more comfortable. The nightstands were changed to circular tables, taking away the sharp edges. If you can't do that, you can always use drooping plants or fabric. The bed stayed where it was, okay? And the way we got the energy coming through the door to actually be diverted to the left and to the right and to go into a meandering pattern was to use a screen. There's a screen there in white that has plants around it. So the energy is being diverted to the right and to the left by this obstacle, a screen. So that brings us to the end of this module. 
hopefully you're going to get a, you're getting the idea of how we're maneuvering things, how we're placing things. And we'll be doing a lot more of this as we get deeper into this.